When I was young, I was not that interested in business, to be honest. I was, my passion, to the extent there was one, was more science. I drifted into computers. And I suppose what got me into business, to be honest with you, um, was actually I soon found I was being asked to lead things. Uh, so I was doing some strategy work for the new uh, chairman and chief executive of Midland Bank called Kit McMahon. I was listening to what Kit said was important to him. I had this kind of bright flash of inspiration once. Uh, what about if, rather than taking banking out of the branches, you took branches out of banking? What would that make possible? And one thing it clearly made possible that was in line with Kit's agenda uh, was you could, without investing in a lot of new branches, you could increase your market share of current accounts. Um, and so that clearly was appealing to him. But what occurred to me is if you could take branches out of banking, you could actually really turn the whole of banking upside down. And my belief about that was if you did that well, you'd uh, reap rewards in customer loyalty that would make it just as profitable as the existing models, which really didn't do a great job for customers at all. So how do I pitch this idea so that everybody can get it? And first react in those days was quite a complicated idea. The, the second most frightening moment in my business career was when I walked away from the middle and board with a check to build first direct. Because walking back to the office, I'm like, God, I, you know, be careful what you wish for. I started off with an intention to make this a very different bank. It became very clear to me the way you make a business stand out. The way a business becomes a symbol of excellence is by designing a really powerful brand experience. I've got to build a brand experience here that's addictive, um, that people love. Uh, that's the way to make it iconic. And for me, you know, putting a business into the world is what drives me, not necessarily staying with it long term. And while I was thinking these things, I got a phone call from a headhunter saying uh, Mercury Communications needs a new chief executive. Now Mercury was a huge company. I mean, I left First Direct, it maybe had a thousand people. Uh, Mercury had 10,000 people. It was turning over nearly a billion pounds a year. I, I had a pretty game-changing idea there, which was what if we took the lead in transforming telecommunications? Like, why didn't we shape the future rather than be subject to the forces of change? So at the end of my time there, effectively, one-to-one -one was sold to T-Mobile. The Mercury consumer business uh, was merged with some cable companies. Ultimately, that uh, ended up in the hands of Virgin Media. All very lucrative business for the shareholders indeed. As Mercury was being broken up, I, was, I stayed at Cable & Wireless for a while. Uh, in fact, uh, they asked me to go to Silicon Valley and to run a small venture fund there. And while I was out there, I got a call from somebody that I had got to know when I was at Mercury, um, a guy called Peter Davis. By a circuitous route, ended up as chairman of Prudential. And he gave me a call and he said, you know, you're interested in coming and doing some work at Prudential because I believe, like you, that uh, the future of most businesses, and particularly financial services, where you have a strong track record, is digital. Now, he did not have in mind the fact I would be wandering into his office asking him for an 80 million pound check to create a new company called Egg. I went back to the principles I had at First Direct. The imagery was iconic, the advertising was iconic, the idea was iconic and it became the fastest ever growing bank in the UK. I mean it went off like a rocket. And uh, in terms of bringing in deposits and customers, we hit our five-year target in the first six months. Egg became voted one of the top 10 internet brands in the world, uh, alongside nine American brands like eBay and Amazon and other great internet brands that were uh, around at that time. And so, I mean, an Egg at the same time was floated on the London Stock Exchange. Three years after it launched, value 1.3 billion pounds. Now, what an investment that was from Prudential. So Egg effectively became up for sale. So it was eventually bought by Citibank. Um, we were sitting on a beach. At the same day, actually, within half an hour of each other, the phone rang twice. And the first one was from a friend of mine. He said, um, I've left Egg and I want to start a new technology company. And he was looking for investment. I was very happy to invest and back him. Um, and of course, that grew as inevitably it would. Garlic was a game changer and um, 
in identity protection. So Experian, one of the biggest data companies in the world, a big player in identity protection, said we understand what Golic's doing is a game changer for us and everybody else here. Actually, we would very much like to buy you. To, to my great delight, really, that deal was done just before Christmas in 2011. And that enabled me to do what I had been thinking I would like to do for about a year before.